Well, today I'm going to make this little video to hopefully help somebody out. If you're, you may be right now, I'll kind of get to the quick fix anyway, then I'll go into more detail about how I've tracked it down. Uh, I've had this happen to me four times in the past year. I would be at a campground or at Walmart, wherever, and decide I'm going to leave, start the engine up, engine's running, everything's fine, put my foot on the pedal, and nothing I do would get it out of gear. I'm just stuck. Can't go nowhere. And eventually, for the four, the four times, I'd, I'd keep tapping the pedal, I'd shut it off, start the engine, keep monkeying around. Eventually, it would come out of gear and I could drive on. It worked fine for a couple months, then do it again. All right, so then I, it's, it's, it's winter time now. It's December. It's cold. I had time to, to actually troubleshoot it a little bit further to find out what's going on. So I did find out if right now you're on, at a campground trying to leave and yours won't come out of park. Now this is a workhorse chassis, W24, the P32s, P30s may be the same or close to it. Uh, but all you need to access is this little solenoid right here. There's two mechanisms that I found that keeps your keeps it in park. First of all, you got a mechanical one that you can see, well there, there you can see it moves, there's the mechanical action right there that unlocks it and allows it to come out of the park. But then you've also got an electrical, which is the safety part, right down here. You see the little, with the little green connector, and you've got this little rod here that runs up and you can see how it moves. Well, until this activates, it's not going to allow the shaft to move and you're not going to be able to drive away. Now a quick fix, because this could be a couple different things causing it, but um, let me find my screwdriver. Where my tools go? Oh here we go. But a quick fix, if you're sitting there right now wanting to start, just take this bottom cover off to gain access. I took everything apart. You don't have to go that far. You, all you have to do is just take this bottom cover off. It sits, sits up here like this. So Phillips screwdriver, take a total of four screws. You got uh, no, a total of eight screws, you got four on each side. Drop that lower lower panel off, and you will should see this device here. And uh, take your screwdriver, you got this little green piece, you got to punch it, punch it out of the way first, and then push this. Now once you do that, now you don't even have to push the brake pedal. You can now put it in gear. So that's all you got to do. And, uh, with my troubleshooting, I found my fault to actually be the brake switch. It's got a weird, like a double acting brake switch. Um, and it's have, having intermittent issues. But but if you're stuck on the side of the road right now, trying to leave, unplug this wire and you, you'll be able to drive off. I'll get you going. And then um, I'll go a little bit further into how I got to this point and do some more troubleshooting. Well, here we are. You see the brake panel underneath the dashboard here, and you can see this is the, the brake switch. You see how what a loose, goofy mouth this is? Well, the first section up here, this is what controls your brake lights when you turn them on. So when you, you know, when you put on the brake pedal, you know, voltage is coming in, going out to the, turn on your brake lights. What's odd about this, now the, on the rear section, this is what's controlling that safety interlock. When you push on the brake pedal, what it's actually doing is breaking the current connection to the solenoid. So the spring forces the plunger back and allows it to come out of gear. Now I'm going to take this little switch off. I've got me a new one on the way. It's supposed to be here today. And I'm going to see if I can't make a better better fit than what it is. Because I'm not pleased with, with the way that wiggles around that, that way. So I'll get it off and... See how it's designed. Okay, bear with me. I'm trying to do all this stuff one-handed with it, with a cell phone. But I was wanting to further explain how this system works. And it's a little odd at first till I, till I use my test light to figure out, figure out exactly what was going on. Because here we have the little culprit here that is the little safety device that keeps it from going into park. It's like a little solenoid. It's got a plunger on it. And there's a little hole in the shaft that that little plunger drops into prevents your gear shift from coming out of park. So you'll notice right now the ignition is off, no current or anything at all. So I put the key in and I rotate it and okay you see the light comes on. Turn the key off, nothing. 
okay but just okay so then you're using you're using your test lights oh okay it's been engaged now i can get out of the park but no that's not true just because you have current coming to this does not mean it's going to release it actually means it's locked and which is kind of backward because you have two lock I mean, you got your mechanical lock up here and then you got your electrical so i'm assuming when you're up and, and when the ignition key is off that goes off but you're relying on you got your mechanical lock here as soon as it goes on this is engaged now, now it is also locked it's not going to come off and i locked my test light loose but anyway and i've got a rubber band holding my brake switch closed as if the brake pedal's all the way up and then as soon as i release that rubber band then you'll notice the current has now gone away. Let's see if I can do both at the same time. Get back in there. Okay. Alright, so you see here, there's the brake switch. As soon as I push on it, just like when your pedal's all the way up, okay, so when your pedal's all the way up, it has current. When the current is activated to that solenoid, you're not going to come out of park current's keeping it activated. As soon as you push down on the brake pedal, you lose current. As soon as you lose current, then you can take it out of gear. So it seems a little bit odd. See, there's that little hole I was talking about. So that's why as soon as you, you know, if you're in a situation where you got to get your RV moved just by unplugging it, that's why it works. Because you unplug it, you're killing the voltage to it. So it's it's always disengaged at all, at all times. Of course, that's an important safety feature. They want your foot on the pedal anytime you leave park and go into reverse or neutral drive. But I just wanted to further explain how that worked. And uh, and actually, I've got me a new. And yours may be the same way. The switch is kind of loose as it screws up in there. I got a new switch supposed to be here later today. And I think what I'm going to try to do is get me some Teflon tape, wrap around these threads to tighten up the tolerances a little bit to see if I can't get a little bit uh, firmer switch where it's not moving, moving around so bad but it's actually in, in the right spot. Then, let's see here, I'm going to talk about a little bit how I got to this point because it, it took some research to get all this apart. Actually, luckily I got a factory repair manual and I was able to print this information out and, and, and figure it out. But if anyone ever has to change your ignition switch, right here is your ignition switch, and right here is your ignition lock. Now, in order to get this apart, where's my top cover at? Okay, that's not my top cover. There it is. Okay. We well, see it's got, it's got that hole on there, so I've had the ignition lock out already. And I'd like to show you how to do that, but it's going to be hard to do one-handed. Anyway, if you look closely, where is she at? Okay, yeah, right there. There's that hole. You got to get your Allen wrench in there. But when the cover's on there, it's very difficult difficult to do because that cover the, won't come off until this comes out. So if you ever have to change, get into your ignition switch or change the ignition lock. And while that plastic cover is still on there, you can raise it up just a little, little bit, enough to get an Allen wrench in there. You can get that Allen wrench in there and you push down on it. And it's a weird combination. You have to, uh, as you like, put it in start position. Oh, I need to back up. Whenever you do this, you need to disconnect the battery. Because otherwise you're cranking all the time. But uh, when the battery's disconnected, I'll go ahead and do that. Show you. It's near impossible to show this one-handed. But... Um, of course, the battery is, is disconnected now because you have to turn the key all the way over. And while you're doing that, I'll try it here again. You have your Allen wrench in here. And let's see here. You turn the key off to start position. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, it's so difficult. Give get me a cameraman. It'll make it a whole lot easier. Well, I found out it just can't be done one-handed. Anyway, when you put your take your ignition switch all the way to start position, at that time, take your Allen wrench and push down. And when you do that, this will slide completely out. 
that's your ignition lock. And your actual ignition switch is this big plastic box down here. But, uh, you know, sometimes these pins will get war on you. You know, if you get, sometimes you, if you, you have to keep wiggling it, wiggling it to get it to rotate. You have to get it just right. Sometimes these pins will get, get worn to a point and they start digging in and, and causing trouble. But uh, if you ever need to get in there, let me go backward because I've already got it all apart. Uh, you got these goofy screws where they are here. That weird screw there. I forget the name of them. They're like a reverse Torx. And I found, because I do have those special sockets down in my garage. While I was in the RV, I had, I had a 530 seconds it's a 532 socket. It fit right on there and worked it worked just fine. Because you gotta get those loose to get get these plastic pieces loose. Like I was talking before. When you have this switch out, there you go, I'll put the plastic top back on. Okay, and that switch is in there. And you want to remove it, you can, you'll cock it up at an angle. And remember that hole is kind of tucked back in that in there. And if you didn't know where that hole was, you'd have a time ever figuring out exactly how to get it off. But and that's where uh, an Allen wrench like this comes in handy. An Allen wrench that, that's a, uh, what size is it? That is a f five sixty four or no three thirty seconds. I think I used so. That's the size Allen wrench it takes to, to get into that mechanism. Let's see. But anyway, this goes back together kind of reverse ways and put the bottom cap on there, a couple of screws, and it's really no big deal, but it helps having a clue of how to get into it anyways. So my hope we might get my new switch in here later today and I'll button this thing up. UPS just left. Brought me my new switch, and here's the box, AC Delco. Of course, you see it's made in China, like everything else is. And there's our numbers, the um, AC Delco number, GM number. I guess it's fairly common. And it does have a little bit more of a solid click to it. I mean, it looks identical in every way, but like I said, this only happened to me four times in, in, in a year. Just intermittently, I go to start. I well, I would start it just fine, but it would not come out of gear for nothing. I'd tap on the brake pedal, play with the gear shift, music switch, all that stuff. Eventually, I'd hit the right combination, and then it would uh, would start. So, with my troubleshooting, the best I can come up with is just every now and then this would uh, lose connection, or actually not not break the connection. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to kill the 12 volt connection to get it to uh, to start but if it ever does it to me again at least I better ha I have a better understanding of, standing of, of how it works and what to look for and I've added some uh, some tape here Teflon tape to the threads to see if I can't get it to uh, be a little bit tighter fit where it's not wiggling around so bad so let's get to that Oh, I wanted to mention to you also, this may help. If you go to remove this switch, because it's hard to tell when you're up, up on, upside down on your, on your head where the tabs are to push to release it from the switch. Because you got it on the, the larger connector, you got a little tab right here you'll push in, then pull it out. And on the smaller one, you got a tab right here you'll be pushing in, then pull it out also. Because it's hard to see up in there to, to know which way to, to push and pull so you get the switch get the connector looks kind of easier. Well, I believe way. I got it adjusted where I want. So just barely push on it a little bit. And you hear it clicking. Where is where is it at? There it is. So as I push down, I get my click. That's what I want. And remember if you need to adjust your switch, you just unplug these two connectors and you can screw it in and out to get the adjustment that you need. So I'll finish putting all my little plastic back on and, and start it a few times and make sure she's going to work. I don't know if you can hear this or not, but um, you can see the little solenoid there. You can see my foot on the brake. I'll just touch it. Hopefully you can hear that click. Let me turn off my Bluetooth. Okay, that might be better on the phone. 
So there's a click. So if you ever have a situation where your RV will not come out of gear and you you don't hear that click, then all you gotta do is reach down, unplug this wire, and that'll get you out of the spot and get you on down the road. But all seems to be good because you can see here, you no, know, will not come out of gear until I push on the pedal, get the click. She comes out like she's supposed to. So, all right. So I'm working backward because I'm putting it back together. But if you go to take your ignition switch and stuff apart, this might help you out a little bit to get this top cowling loose. You got a little hidden screw right here, and you got this screw right here, which turns that long shaft and it tightens up on that little stud right there. I'll get those two snugged up, and that's where I've used this, uh, what did I say it was, 5, 30 seconds, yeah, and that works just fine, getting on there and, and getting it snugged up, so you don't have to have, necessarily have those, necessarily have that goofy uh, reverse torque socket, I forget what they're called. Okay. By the way, when you're going to take this cover off, it ha also has two screws in it, it's no big deal, but... This little part here, you might want to know how it comes off. It just pushes in there and locks. Just get a good hold of it and pull it out like that. It takes a pretty good grip. That's all you got to do. We'll wrap, uh, wrap a cloth around it and then tug on it. Makes it easier sometimes. But that's all you have to do. You can get that off, take your plastic off. That's what I've learned anyways as I'm going along. Okay, I think I got this project all wrapped up, and you can see she starts up. Won't go in gear, push the brake pedal, she goes in gear, just like she's supposed to. And I was going to show you, with all the plastic back on, it, you can still get to that little culprit right there, that little switch. Pretty easy, as long as you lay on the floor and get to it. Remember, pop that green piece out and push on that little black piece. and undo it if you uh, happen to lose your click and can't get it out of gear. Hopefully this will help somebody out. You have a great day.